What's good? It's your boy DJ Dells. We have my guy here, Chaz Leon. We have the legendary Dave Ellison, and we have Jeff Young, man. Give it up for these guys right here. Thank you so much for taking the time. Fuck. And uh, man, so there is a little bit of confusion with some, and we need to get this out of the way. The Kings of Thrash is a band. It's a four-piece band, correct? Zach Attackley. And they have an album coming out, mm -hmm. a recording, like yeah. a DVD, double yeah. CD, and vinyl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Chris Poland's going to be featured on there also. He is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they also, you guys are actually working on like a studio album, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Yeah, Indeed, that's true. So far, everything you said is true. Okay. Uh, bridges <laughs> burned. Don't it's start first... lying. Yeah. 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 Don't start lying on us. The, the internet's already doing that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so, like uh, Bridges Burned is the first song that you guys have let us all hear through performances. Yeah. Right. Tonight is going to be the fourth to the last show tonight, correct? That's correct. Four more. Yeah. So, when you're watching mm -hmm. this, check out their site. And go check them out. I'm excited that they've got a special thing they're doing tonight. I'm not going to say what it is. You'll see what it is. You two have some amazing history together. So far, so good. So what? 35 effing years yeah, ago. I know. Can you imagine? Does it feel like it was just yesterday, or does it really feel like 35 years ago? You look pretty good for 35 years. Yeah, you guys do, man. up well, right? We Shit, man, you guys. <laughs> I feel like we've lived 10 lives since then, and yeah. definitely we've yeah. grown a ton musically, so coming back to play these songs, we can bring not only the vibe and the spirit we had then, because we've been there, done that, but also all of the new kind of vibes and, mm -hmm. and uh, maturity that we've gained through the years. Plus we got two young guns with yes. Jazz and Fred up the middle with a you know whole younger set of influences, mm -hmm. which especially when we get to the originals, that'll come in real handy. I mean, I think it's really awesome that you have OGs. You guys are OGs in the game. Yeah, man. And then you have sure. the Young Bucks. You yeah. guys probably feed off each other's energy. You've got exactly. the knowledge and the wisdom and you know, just being <clears throat> pioneers to the effing game. And then you have these guys that know that new cutting age wave of what's hot and what's fresh that you may not necessarily know about because exactly. it's, they're younger, you know? It's so. a perfect uh, chemistry experiment. Uh, and for me, it's the first time I feel like I've really been in a band in my life. I've heard you say that. Um, and and it's, and you, it's exciting yeah. to have that feeling of brotherhood. We don't fight. And mm -hmm. even if we have issues like last night, there was some sound issues on stage. You know, we couldn't hear each other well. After the show, we sit in the back of the bus and we talk mm -hmm. about it. We come up with strategies to improve the next show and we're always, you know, on the path. Chemistry is everything, everything, man. Yeah, nip that shit in the bud, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's too easy to let unspoken things brew and then I say, hey, Chaz, and nah, 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 now me and him become a clay. Yeah, right. You know, now Jeff doesn't know, but then we tell, yeah, we talk to the crew guy. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. like, man, it's always about the band. It's always about the talent on the stage. None of this exists, right? Mm -hmm. The bus companies can't rent buses. There's no sound man. There's no tour manager. There's no venue. There's nothing <clears throat> unless there's someone performing on a stage, right? And, that, and so it's our responsibility to our crew and to our bus and everybody yes. else there, right? And our record company, it's our responsibility to make sure we're tight first because it all stops and starts right there. And I, and I agree with Jeff. It's, you know... Being in a group, even though we were in a band together, it was not our band, you know? And now, after all these years later, it becomes our band, and we can take all the things that, you don't always know what works, but you certainly know what doesn't. You know, that's one of the things experience gives you, and you learn how to start, like, navigating around those, those, those landmines that you know are potentially troublesome. So you kind of get those resolved and taken care of right away. So when you get in the room and you have that experience, you know, being in a new band is just like dating. It's always awesome yeah. for about the first exactly. six, yeah. months. The honeymoon. Right. Yeah, yeah, the honeymoon phase yeah. is awesome, and right? Then, and then shit yeah. hits the fan. And that's why being out here on this, we needed to do this tour because, you know, I did an interview with jo with Joey Ramone for my first book that I wrote. And I and I talked to him and, and he I'll, I have the tape at home. And I said, we we're talking about it. And he goes, the road is where a band grows, mm -hmm. you know, it's very Joey Ramone. Yeah, and you know, 
We all know that, True. right? And to hear an elder statesman, you know, senior to mm. all of us say it is just a reminder that that's true. And now here we are, Jeff and I are kind of the elder statesmen, and we know that you got to get in the freaking yellow submarine here. Yeah. You go out and, and you got to go carve your path because this is where you get not only get better, but you work out the kinks. You find the, the, one of the funnest things is now writing this new music together, right? Yeah, I've seen so you guys. Incredible. When I walked so into fun. you guys, yeah. vibe and, and it was amazing. The cool thing here, you know, just knowing the history of so many bands from behind the musics and just reading bios of bands, you tend to have one or a couple guys in a band monopolizing the writing and you, it can get really power trippy. Mm -hmm. In this band, it's the total opposite. You know, David and I started the first four originals uh, in a pre-production studio in LA, but now that we're tossing them out, Chaz chimes in, Fred, yeah. our drummer, chimes in, we're working on a new song. Uh, Fred and I wrote the chorus here in the kitchen the other day, then the three of us were working on the pre-choruses backstage in New York. Yeah. The day we played there, we even came up with lyrics on a street corner in Buffalo. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're waiting for a little. You remembered <laughs> old <laughs> lyrics from the Terrifier. Am I not right? Say again. You remembered old <laughs> lyrics from So Far So Good So What when you were writing. If oh. I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah. you guys were doing something with horror movies. Oh, and yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. The Terrifier cast was there, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you said something to him like, "Hey, I remember this." And you started whispering like, "Oh, oh, oh that was the riff. The, the riff, riff yeah, or the yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the actually that was uh, at the Rainbow when we were about to film the Nick Menza documentary. That's really Rest what kicked peace. this whole Rest thing off. Yeah. Uh, we were paying the tab, and I got up and I sang the opening riff to Bridges Burn to him that we'd written back." together in 89 he goes oh i remember that song we got to get in a room dude and that's how this yeah. started yeah. with a clear intent and path that we were going to do like a four or five song ep uh -huh. and the rest just took on its own life from there that's amazing hey you know something has resonated with me since you said it when you said it wasn't my band you started megadeth with dave but I, uh, yeah, but I'm saying that was me and Dave's band. Uh -huh. Me and Jeff now have. Oh yeah, oh right? yeah, okay. See, I'm saying okay. Jeff, Jeff came into that band. Yeah. And oh, you uh, say but, it wasn't but, my band. Yeah, I'm saying, but I'm saying it's now me and now yeah. Jeff and I have a have a group yeah. together, and it's not just he and I. It's, yeah, it's, it's Jazz yeah. and Fred. It's a four way mm -hmm. thing, you know. We yeah. we, we win Song together, we writing, lose together. You know? Has all four names yeah. on it. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure we talked about that. You know, it's it's and I do that really kind of in anything. It's sort of like look, you know, you can be hired. And then do your part, and then you're mm -hmm. free to go. But you don't get anything future. Or, and with this one, look, every band we know, ACDC told us it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, right? We know right. that, right? So it's sort of like, look, you know, we're all grown ups, we're adults, we're not, you know, we're not kids with stars in our eyes and that. Now we have a much more practical approach mm -hmm. to it. We know when to hit the gas, we know when to hit the brake, and it's like, you know, it's sort of like, look, why don't we just join forces and, and all go in? It's amazing. And just, just so do it. Yeah, totally. and it's and it's a it's a better vibe that way because again, everybody's part of the writing, everybody's part of the performing. Uh, we all have to pick up the tab. We all get to shared in the spoils of war. You know, mm -hmm. and that to me is ultimately what a band should be about. Shared responsibility. Facts. And and I feel like you're going to be more creative if you guys actually like each other and have a brotherhood you would think. versus <laughs> versus some um, you know when there's always like that. You know, as you were saying, oh, I hate that guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, that riff is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. F him. Oh, hey, how are you? That is you a know? cool riff. But, <laughs> but, but, but the best riff win. I mean, that's one of the things. Is is you took the words right out of my mouth. We right. let the best riff or lyric win, but we splash all the paint mm -hmm. on the canvas. Mm -hmm. Every one of us has, has the paint. And we're free to splash, and then we all go. That's it. Yeah. That's the color right there we need for this mood. Yeah. Well, that's that's teamwork, right? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, look, every you ha you gotta have a tight team. Look at Michael Jordan. You know, he needed Pippen and all them guys. Right, man. I know you were a big Bulls fan right back in the days. Well, you? you know, the thing Boris is, Grant, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly because they'd always kick the Suns' ass on Phoenix. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but you know, this you're, you're dealing with a creative environment, mm -hmm. right? So there's there's your own expression, and everybody wants to feel like their voice is heard. They've got something to say. Mm -hmm. uh, certain people are more comfortable out front leading that way. Other people feel a little better, kind of couched into the back a little bit. Yeah. As long as they get to have a say in it in, in that 
Uh, you're dealing with money, you're dealing with royalties, you're dealing with credit, you're dealing with accolades, you're dealing with more girls scream at Chaz because he's better looking than all of us, you know. So uh, I see him, I see the girls in front, I'm like, yeah, that's our boy right there. You know? <laughs> I love it, man. You got a rock star front man. That's, the, that's the front man's job, man. That, fucking you damn wow, right have, you know, dazzle him and, you know, Jeff's busy shredding and, you know, I'm back there just kind of like, I'm the monkey in the middle kind of of all the parts. It's kind of, you know, it's funny. We choose our instruments not because of the instrument, but because of our personality. Mm. Our personality chooses our instruments, you know? I've always loved your playing, man, because it's, you got such grooves when you play. Like, even like the early stuff, like the conjuring. Yeah. Like, when that break comes in, where the verses are, yeah. and, then, and then it goes to another little bridge before it goes. It's so funky, jazzy. And it, it gets you moving. Like, you know, as a, as a bass player, so we grew up, me and Jeff grew up, you know, kind of the 80s was the big, you know, sort of like, it was all left hand kind of acrobatics. And there was, you know, obviously Eddie Van Halen, Randy Rhodes, for me, Jaco Pastorius on the bass. So there's a lot of this attention over here. Um, and it wasn't until I moved to LA, because I'd done some recording, but when I got to LA and you get in the studio, and bass players are this whole finger snob, jazz snob thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you play with your fingers. It's like, listen, when you get in their room and the clock's ticking and someone's paying the bill, and it's like, hey, just name me. So you need. So I just need you to do this, right? And yeah. there's a click track, and the money's clicking every freaking beat, and you can't do that. If I can't do it, they're gonna call him and he'll do it, mm -hmm. right? That's how you, you know. So if you wanna, you know, get a gig, keep a gig. You learn what you got to do to keep the gig, right? So for me, once, I'll just use the Megadeth stuff, for example, so because I was young, I was 18, and I'd spent so much time on all this sort of stuff over here, I realized this is the moneymaker, right? This is it right here. You know, this is what, in, in, mo in most bass players, you make your living from the fifth fret down. Oh, right? Oh, okay. That's how you pay your yeah, bills. Yeah, because that's right? where the Not this shit up are. here, right? And yeah. as cool as this is, and you uh, can do it from time to time, yeah. and it's good to know how to do it. But that's usually when you start playing that, the engineer, the producer looks at you and go, can you stop that? And just, just do that you know? So those are some like really, you know, important life lessons that I got to learn very early on. And then, mm -hmm. it's, then it is about that. And of course, look, in, in, in Kings of Thrash, Fred, our drummer is amazing. Yeah, he he's, is. He's one of the best. Oh, yeah. He's just fan. He's, he's young. He's got spirit. He's got heart. He's got experience. And he's just he's just a creative dude. He sits around, he draws all day. He Our album drums. cover was designed by him for the yeah. best of the West. Wow. So my bass playing is just quite honestly, it, it's 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 just a reflection of the people I'm around, quite mm. honestly. They influence what I play more more than, than me just sitting around being brilliant coming up with shit. <laughs> because we bounce ideas off each you, other. You mentioned a you great know? thing where you said a lot of the eighties stuff yeah. was down here in left hand. Mm -hmm. But in flamenco, you learn that this is the hand that makes the guitar dance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the hand that makes people dance, listeners dance. And we pay a lot of attention to what's going on with both hands in this band. And you'll see that in Bridges Burned. Like, pay attention to our right hands during yeah. that song tonight. Yep. gotta talk about this because I feel like this is something that's always not being praised. I, I see it a lot with the hip hop industry, but you guys, oh, yeah. what's in the bag? You guys, oh yeah, oh, in Mega Dash. Oh, yeah. This shoe, I'm pretty sure you had these back in the days. Found our shoes. Um, oh, yeah. they got a collection. Jordan, Jordan, you, you left those behind on tour. These, <laughs> these guys, like, this these like guys, yeah. I oh know, yeah, Dad, totally. You these. these, yes. And Charlie B. These from, were Charlie the, uh, had these from Anthrax. These were like too, Countdown yeah. to Extinction shoes or something. Yes, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. And I, you were wearing Dunks. You were wearing the Nike, the black yeah. and white Nike <laughs> basketball. The um, He's got everything. Yeah, remember that. It's very kind of them to give us shoes. <laughs> if they were your, if they were your size, I'd hook you up. But, but what about the? Remember, I had tiger high tops. You had a, a ton of sneakers. Yeah, I just don't. So have here's those. a funny story. So we get signed to Capitol Records. Thank Tom you. Wally, who then went on to start Interscope uh, Records, and then became the president of Warner Brothers, and, and so he loved Megadeth. But we got there, and he had a inroad to get some Nikes for us, right? Uh -huh. So we got some free shoes. We're kind of like, wow, we're in the big time. That's why at the beginning of the P Cells video. You see us, it's either the beginning or the end, we're intentionally walking by the camera to show off our shoes, right? Yeah. Like, 
Well, we better show off our endorsement, right? Oh, that's, that's why we did that. That's so if why you, look you at did it, that. Cells. You know what? You did that. I remember exactly when you did that. You were getting interviewed by Ricky Rockman at Madden Square Garden. Well, that was and, another time. And you guys. <laughs> that was another time. And, we, and it the, was that sneaker. I was think it right either there? you or Dave was wearing. <laughs> either you or Dave Mustaine was wearing. And then you guys. They were. He was like, "Oh, you guys are so. Are you guys really excited to play for um to, to perform at the Garden? Are you guys excited to perform at the Garden?" And um, either you or Dave was like, "Man, the Knicks suck. It's all about the Bulls." <laughs> and I was like, "Dude, Wait, they so, are so I just badass. showed you before the interview started. Yeah. I had these shoes that I bought in Phoenix, and I just noticed music. They actually have music on them. So I need to so you can sight read while you're out, like yeah. you know, dribbling the ball or whatever you're doing, uh -huh. and you have in your Starbucks. I did yeah. not notice that yeah. until just today. I'm yeah. like. We can sit down and make a song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? What does that so mean? Whatever that is, that will become a Kings of Thrash song. There you go. We're gonna kick out, out of hell. But yeah. you kicked out of hell. You were literally <laughs> doing the sneaker thing that's so huge now. Yeah. yeah. It's like I mean, you know, especially since yeah. you, like people are are going crazy for right. these Jordans. Look, we've been doing. We this. got influenced by look, certainly Iron Maiden. Uh -huh. You know, the stretch jeans, high tops. I just love that whole look. You know, that whole new wave of British heavy metal. Yeah. Especially Maiden did a lot. Um, early Def Leppard. Uh, that kind of stuff. So, um, and then we used to go. There was a, a Nike outlet mall north of uh, by Milwaukee. Okay, I think it was between Milwaukee and Chicago, we'd always pull in there. Gary Mills, and, and right, yeah, and buy, uh, and buy a ton of like Nike. You know, there's like not discount. I mean, they were a little bit cheaper, but uh -huh. you know, Nikes are expensive, right? Yeah, we're right. you know a budget band, you know. So we had that back in those days. Or just, you know, so uh, that's yeah. We 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 took great pride in having pretty badass shoes. Yeah, I mean, and it's, I just wanted that to be documented yeah. because it, there's not enough documentation about yeah. thrash metal, the big four. All of you guys were, were they huge had shoes. about they had cool yeah. shoes, man. You yeah. guys were were, were yeah. very fashionable. Look, they like you see these kids now; they're all wearing metal shirts, which I which I absolutely hate if they don't actually love the band. I think yeah. that's sinful, but like you know, they dress basically like. We yeah, like your poses. shirt because it looks like a king of thrash on that shirt. Yeah, yeah. Anthrax. Yeah, right Anthrax, there. baby. Yeah. Frank Bellow and them guys, you seem to be pretty cool with them yeah, guys. Yeah, I love the Anthrax guys. Yeah. Right. And, you know, they've been very gracious to me. They're good. Charlie and all those guys. Love Charlie. Shout out to Charlie. Yeah. Friend of mine, too. So I love Charlie. Remember Charlie. the first Charlie's time wonderful. on my tour we met them at Electric Ladyland in New York? Electric Lady Land really? Studio. And so far, so good. So what? Scott Ian, yeah. No kidding. I didn't know that. They came. We all hung out there. I don't know if they were recording, but uh, it's the first and only time I was in Electric Lady Land. Nice. It was Scott Ian and David Elson. Nice. It seems like everyone respects that band and gets along with that band so well. Yeah. Like, they, you know, they were. Yeah. I remember Dave telling stories when he moved out there with Metallica, you know. The, yeah. The Anthrax. They guys helped basically him out. take him in, you know, yeah. and like, kind of help him out. Uh, and, you know, they, so they were. They were, uh, they were, you know, brothers, of course, Johnny and Marcia's Azula yeah. know, brought them in after Metallica, the Megaforce, and launched their career. But mm -hmm. yeah, look, there's a reason they're one of, they're a pillar of the big four, you know? Yes. They got their own sound, and they've kind of had two different sounds, too. They had their Belladonna years, and they had their Bush, Bush years, yeah. so they've got, you know, some variety in there. In there. And there's, look, they're survivors. I think at this point, it's about being a survivor, mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's, the only thing harder to get to the top is to try to stay at the top. That's, know? that's the tough part. And look, People like you were saying, like um, Charlie and even Frank and you, mm. how many different projects are you all in? Like, you love this shit. It's your workhorse. Uh, you have the Lucid, which is fire, by yeah, the way. Thank you. And um, I love that combination you got with the Lucid. Um, Vinny you. from Sponge got a kick ass you voice. Know, I like work, you know, look, for the first 20 years, I only did Megadeth. And you have to. You know, mm -hmm. Newstead had a great saying that a fist packs a more powerful punch than just four individual fingers. And I'll never I'll never forget that because that really had, had truth to it. And in the beginning, you know, when you find a, a collection of people you're working with and you, and you think it, it's got a shot at something, you've got to keep it together. You really got to keep. I mean, I, I man, I put my arms around that '90s era of Megadeth to just keep it together, mm -hmm. because man, I, as a, I'm a Kiss fan, right? As soon as the first Kiss guy left, that was it for me. I just checked out. That was it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I know as a fan. Same with Cheap Trick. Once Tom Peterson left, I didn't listen to him anymore. So I know as a fan myself, it's mm -hmm. like you because in in rock groups, it's more than just a musician. You, each musician has their fans, yes. right? And and totally. they have their identity. They have their relatable, and mm -hmm. it, it isn't just the one. It's it's how they interact together, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's it's it's that's a thing, you know.
know, is, is, mm -hmm. is keeping that together. But in every great band in history, four you can go down four the list. pieces, and I keep saying uh -huh. that, you know, yeah. when people ask us who all is in the band. Four people, like yeah. Kiss, like Queen, yeah. like, like the Who, <laughs> like Cheap yeah, Trick, yeah. and everyone has their role in it. Yet that also gives enough airspace in the music mm -hmm. when you have a four piece. Yeah. Like Van Halen, another great example. One thing I, I thought was really interesting um, is that you guys are recording this new project on Analog. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I did check out a little bit of you talking about how, you know, Analog has such a, a, a natural sound versus digital Pro Tools sound. It right? starts first with the fact that we are analog creatures. Yes. We're analog. Mm -hmm. We're not made to input this digital information, and maybe that's part of the explanation why people aren't as connected to music, newer music. They can't feel it like they used to. Maybe that same mm -hmm. music, if it was recorded in that format, would touch you, mm -hmm. you know, deeper. Yes. But, uh, and it's more expensive, like at one tape is... It's like 400 bucks, right? Exactly, at this day and age, but you gotta give a shit. Yes. Yeah. And it's hard to do that because you got to be able to have a band that can walk in a room and do, and, and nail it. Do or it in one take a lot of or two bread. takes, and, yeah, you're, yeah. and you've got it. And that's a lost art. You guys are professionals, but though. it's an art we can shit. we can endeavor to keep alive. Um, and it's a great experiment to see when we release it how it hits people. I can't wait. And you know, as you were saying, we're, what do you say, analog creatures? I think that's really cool. Like the the world, I feel like with all the technology, social media, I feel like the world is moving faster than we could keep up at times. I think 100%. that's why some people have a hard time coping with, with real life situations at times, yeah, where yeah, people start story. going back shit crazy. Yeah, people mm -hmm. people you know? want to know, like, why is it going crazy And all these frequencies, these, these weird towers yeah. they're putting everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, for the cell phone communication that we clearly could live without. I mean, I remember back in the day leaving my home without some in my hand and I just come back and check my answering machine. Yeah. And that's how I got the Megadeth gig. I was at a rodeo, came back and there was a message on my answering machine. That's you know, amazing. It was analog. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a tape. Yeah. A <laughs> tape <laughs> that <laughs> the yeah. 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 Somehow we survived. Yeah. Nowadays you can't leave your... This our bus Wi-Fi doesn't work. So. Oh my yeah. God. Come on. Yeah. Which helps us out. We're like, hey, and yeah, even now you're on the you And, and, and the, the stop of it is going to help it's with the spill, creative juices. It spills over even into our live gigs. I'll give you an yeah. example. In Arizona, of all places where we know they have lots of crazy RF and frequencies, mm -hmm. all three... Chris was touring with us at the time back in October. All of our amps had... Mexican radio playing through it every time we rested if you weren't playing I'm all no my car oh my coming God. through your amp <laughs> yeah. and the monitor guy who's like a 20 something looks up at me and he's like oh it usually goes away he's by lost. Showtime. time it was lost yeah. usually, yeah. Usually, usually usually goes and yeah. he goes when Eric Johnson was here he was literally putting Reynolds wrap between every pedal and on top of his amp and that's what we had to do that day wow. they're walking around putting reynolds wrap on top of my amps we did they we had that experience the other day that's and, a trip he's yeah. an analog creature and he knows yeah. so all this <laughs> stuff it's not just interfering with the humans it's interfering mm. with our equipment no. that's this deep, is vintage I love this vintage, vintage build equipment when we, we're using marshals and stuff that is modeled after stuff that was built in the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. it's made to work with that kind of electricity, you know? Wow. One more question, because I know you guys got to go. I really want to know, because this is, I'm pretty sure it's the newest single out with the Lucid. You did a collaboration with Violet J from... Yeah. Uh, how did that come about? That was Vinny's idea. Yeah? Yeah, Vinny's a, he's, he's a whack job, man. He's like a true <laughs> fucking rock star, that guy. And they're Detroit guys. Okay. So, you know, that's something that about Vinny is cool, man. It's... You know, Sponge, remember in the 90s, like Cryptic Writings, for instance, was a big competitor at radio, right? Mm -hmm. So they're always jockeying for the top 20, top 10, top 5, trying to get the number one. Yeah. You know, so around us was obviously Creed, um, you 
know, certainly Metallic, uh, but you know, then there were other new bands like Sponge, you know. Yeah, what's that? Rod and Pinata around Wow, that time. yeah, it was always that was up a there. banger too. So we were competitors yeah. back in those days, but everybody loves Sponge. You know, I would say yeah. they're like Cheap Trick. Everybody loves them. They're just a cool yeah. band that, uh, and Vinny is just so Vinny's cool. a rock star, he's man. He's a rock star, man. He's right. just, he's a cool guy. It's been fun uh, working with him. He comes up with very out of my yeah, maggot, genre. Yeah, Maggot He comes out of my <laughs> genre of ideas, you know, uh, and that's, that's what's fun. You know, about working with, like I said, you know, the first 20 years of my career, The Fist, you know, all Megadeth. Yeah. But then when the band disbanded, it was like, well, now I guess it's time to go explore some other stuff, you know. And sometimes you stay close to what you know, metal, and because you think sometimes, well, mm -hmm. my fans want me to be this. But, you know, at some point, you do that because maybe professionally that, that is part of the equation. Mm -hmm. but, but then there comes a point where it's like, well, what do I want to do? You know, and now yeah. I think we're certainly of an age that it's... Uh, it's sort of like, well, what do we, what do we want to do? You know, just because exactly. you know, we're out here doing the mega years as part of this tour, this doesn't mean that the mega years has to always be the sound of what we do either. You, know, we you guys are musicians. You love music, clearly, or you wouldn't be doing this shit no more. Yeah. So why not experiment and try different stuff? I mean, you yeah, know. It's like a rolling frat room. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like. <laughs> I was just so shocked when I heard that record in a pleasant way. I was like, yo, this is really cool. I mean, you had, you know, it, it got a hip hop vibe to it. You've got the uh, Faith No More epic vibe going yeah, on right. with it. And, um, yeah. and then you have Vinny singing on the hook. And um, you know, you basically replayed everything instead of I like was a really, rap sample. What, that cool. song is really great, and we got the approval from Faith No More to do it because when you ever you do what would be considered a parody, which mm -hmm. is to change the lyric, like what we did with these boots are made for walking. Right? Anytime you do that, you have to go to the the artist and get their approval. Clearance, so they gave yeah. us they get all the money, which is fine. We just wanted the fun of doing it, you know. Yeah. But, but to learn that baseline, I mean, that's one of the hippest, it is. coolest baselines from Epic of the 90s you know when it, that whole kind of funk metal thing came in you know there's prong doing a little bit of that mm -hmm. and, you know it's different bands but that man they fit the more nailed it. and billy gould is just a great great bass. are we gonna get a visual for that or it's still up in the air uh a music I video we don't know yet. i <laughs> hope so true. i think that could really break the internet yeah um and uh, you know you were talking about a great bass line in the 90s i have to end with this the 80s best bass line in metal, one of them is definitely Peace Cells. The damn bass line was on MTV News of course. all the time, on the end of the hour or whatever the hell it was. I mean, that must have been pretty uh, pretty wild. Just like, you know, MTV so big, they make and break artists. And then you the have The funny that. thing is, man, people tell me that all the time. I miss the whole thing because we were on tour. Yeah, you guys always watch MTV every hour or so. Yeah. People go, dude, it was on all the time. It's like, I'll take your word for it. it was We were in Cleveland. Uh -huh. or, you know, we were out with freaking Ronnie Dio or whatever, you yeah, know. Rest in playing. peace, Ronnie Dio. Yeah, Dio. so it's, uh, no, it, it is cool. I mean, that's one of those freebie moments in life when you mm. just go, you know, wow, that what a cool thing to have land in your yeah. life. Because, you know, that's that's certainly one of my marks, you know, for, for my That's years, one of the so. greatest bass lines ever in yeah. metal. Yeah, it's really I think cool to have that. You don't even need to hear that. You probably have heard it a billion times. I mean, to but. me, when I think about bass lines, I always think of, like, NIV by, you know, Sabbath. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's where I go, and then other yeah. people go to Peace Cells, and so uh, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. So thank you. I mean, different generations, too, you know. Of course, even though yeah. I, I was blessed enough, as I was saying off camera, I had neighbors older than me. So that's how I got introduced to Megadeth. Yeah, you know, Megadeth, uh, Killing Is My Business and Business Good was the first metal album I ever owned. And um, I'm sorry, but well, I, I, I dubbed it yeah. because I was a kid, you know, I was, I was, I think I was eight years old when well, I had that tape. Yeah. And um, man, I just was so blown away. And I, yeah. I and, and you know, that album has aged so well. Like, you know, now that I'm an adult, I'm like, I listen to Killing my, Is My Business and Business is Good. And I'm listening to, the, the instruments to the lyrics that was a gangster ass yeah, fucking song right, right? i mean think about <laughs> the bad lyrics bad. Sorry, you're literally talking about being a hitman yeah. doing the job that's with, this really, with this really pretty lyric you know we heard the melody right yeah. oh that yeah. riff is so yeah. badass our sound man <laughs> runs around saying that after the gig he's like mixing is my business <laughs> where, where, where do you hear your for treatment because where do you hear it on modern 21st century equipment, uh -huh. the way the way we play it, the way we separate. We're playing it. that. You're playing that tonight. Yeah. The whole album. We're playing the whole album, brother. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. oh.
I'm so happy. So yeah. far, yeah. so good. Oh, yeah. And killing in their entirety. Oh, oh my God. God. We've had people come up to us and just say, like, wow, dude, that sounded better than the better than the record. Of course. It's, it has to do, a lot of it has to do with the equipment that we're playing with. Yeah. A doctor come up to me. Also, the tempos. Uh, after our Flint show in uh, D Detroit, and he was, I mean, he looked so conservative to be at a Megadeth or a Kings of Thrash show to begin with, but he comes up and he's like, you know, I always thought the tempos on Killing were too fast. Uh -huh. But you guys, I can tell you, really spent the time to find the right tempos, and now I was really able to understand all the musicality that's mm. contained therein and how funky it is. There's a lot that's of what funk I was saying on before. that album on like, Killing, your play on Skull is Beneath the Skin. Fun, There's a couple other funky riffs on that album. Very yeah. funky. And we were talking about that last night with Tempos. I don't know if you've seen the movie Whiplash. Where he's, Not my tempo. Yeah. Uh, but uh, You know what my favorite, and my favorite lick on the entire Killing Is My Business album is? Is the chosen ones when they come out of the yeah. Oh, it moved. That's my, no, my geezer. Because it was this song was so slow when we wrote all that shit. It was so slow. It was like down, 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 right. So I was doing all these geezery licks, right? Because that was kind of my jam was the, that Sabbath era, stuff, yeah, right. And so I, I love putting these little geezer licks in, and it goes by so fast. And our tempo, we really pulled it back. We dialed it, and and it contrasts nicely to the other songs that are around it. But that's the funny. My favorite, my favorite is like it's like a backwards Gene Simmons. You know, Gene goes boom, right, and I go mm -hmm. <laughs> like a Pepto Bismol. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that was when you guys did the first album. I think that you guys wanted to be fast the fastest the heaviest right and, and, and you when were we young. started we didn't when we started oh, we didn't no oh, the songs okay. were not written like that and in fact it was slower than than you know david come out of metallica mm -hmm. the, yeah. the leather demo it was slower than that and then mm -hmm. you know metallic was getting well actually what i remember here when, when we kind of got the kill them on we sat there my friend greg and recalls it well because he's playing guitar he goes dude well, the day we got the album we sat there for 38 minutes in complete silence <laughs> well dave well me and craig and dave listened to the Kill oh my record. god that must oh, have yeah. been the crazy yeah it was uh, it was uncomfortable for sure i'm sure and, because uh, he wrote like but, a lot of that shit but you know they you know? change a lot and you know it's funny doc mcgee who managed us for a short minute in the late 80s but when jeff was in the band um managed me and jeff with my up and he said he goes you know metallica gives this impression that they're fast but they're really not that fast yeah they, they did they they and, and I thought that was a really good observation because even Kill 'em All was slowed down. Four Horsemen first uh, mechanics. It was slowed down quite a bit yeah. compared to the to the demo tape, and uh -huh. and so our stuff was was even slower than that. And then this fan wrote this letter because he was pissed. He was I hope your new shit's faster than Metallica because he was mad that Kill 'em All was slower, right? Yeah. So that just fucking set Dave off, and then we went to rehearsal that <laughs> night, and then everything turned into what it is. But but to the degree that. You know the intention to have the speed and mm. that was there but you know now again we're just we're we're, we're more seasoned guys mm. we've got our experience and now the clue and the trick is to find you know. we want it to be as fast as possible mm. but you also wanted to have a groove and a there's a sexual element to some of the songs mm -hmm. and a lot of the times if we play some too i go man it's losing the sexy yeah like, yeah we're that's losing important that. And there's got to be also airspace and hot spots or hot spaces yes. like Queen named their Those album. Those little where, spaces. It's like a boxer, so you know. Uh -huh. It's between the hits, you know, and then he gives you the punch. Yeah. You know, and it's those silences in between that give the notes power. If everything is always so fast that there's never any silence, uh -huh. then there's the power's gone. So yeah. we've really spent a lot of time on each and every song really working with a metronome how fast can we make mm -hmm. it but okay let's put this is where it sits the best where it's really going to connect with us and with the audience so check that out tonight see what you think i will let us i know will after. i'm super excited guys if you get a chance to see them please do so and um pick up this live album which is available cleopatra records you want to know something that crazy that? Don't worry about it. Cleopatra, baby. Yeah, Cleopatra. Yeah. One guy came. People are already showing up with the pre-orders for us to That's sign at our VIPs. Yeah. Guy the other day, the first one we ever saw in the flesh, he said, I ordered it, and it, I got it the next day. Mm -hmm. He was blown away. I was blown away. How could yeah, he get it that fast? Awesome. But literally, you ordered it, 
mailbox. And it's got yeah. the DVD, so you can watch Plus the show. DVD yeah. and two yeah. CDs. Yeah. That's, that's and right. then summer, just because it's a longer turnaround for vinyl, it'll be coming out on vinyl. Mm -hmm. So yeah, guys, check that out. Kings of Thrash. And then the recording, the, the actual studio album will be getting, well, that you guys are still writing and working We're on. We're recording that. in May, so. Okay. So probably we'll a year we'll from see. now. Nah, no. Oh yeah, we're in 2023. We could put you guys. Yeah, we'll have it out by Christmas. Christmas. Analog creatures in the digital world. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we'll have it out by Christmas. Is there anything you guys want to say before we go to the people? No, just thanks everybody for your open ears and giving us an honest chance and checking out what we're doing. And if you haven't, give it a chance because it's more than you expect. Dad, just thanks for the support. We'll see you out there. Between the hits. Between the hits. <laughs> bonk bonk, see you guys soon. Thank you for tuning in. Smash that like, share this with a friend, and support what these guys do. Please do, because these guys are making some amazing things happen. I walked in and heard something. I can't share none of it. I'll tell you, you went for something. You went for something when it goes down. Woo! Right. <laughs> Peace and love. Be nice to each other, man. Right on, man. Yeah. Thank All you. Right.